founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell, a global leader in regenerative therapies. Today, I'm going to answer the question of what exactly is Wharton's jelly? Well, the term Wharton's jelly originated in the 1600s, where there was a doctor, his last name was Wharton, who identified that anatomical area of the umbilical cord. And that was back in the 1600s. We didn't even know what cells were back then. So it was a pretty remarkable discovery. So first of all, for I got some visual aids. For those of you who aren't quite sure what an umbilical cord looks like, uh, this is it, okay? So this is actually a clean representation of an umbilical cord. Um, and it's what attaches the uh, growing baby, the fetus, to the placenta, all right? So normally when the baby's born, you clip it off and then cut it, okay? Um, <clears throat> so that the baby's then able to, you know, breathe on their own um, and get nutrition from their mom. They don't have to get it through the umbilical cord anymore. All right? So that's what the umbilical cord looks like, um, you know, in real life. Now let's look at what it, it appears in a cross section. So in a cross section, you know, as if you cut right through it, there are actually two arteries and a vein, okay? So that's where the blood flow comes to and fro um, the baby, the fetus. And <clears throat> the area here around those blood vessels is called Wharton's jelly, all right? It's a gelatinous matrix that comprises this area. Now. Interestingly enough, that area we found out over the last 10, 20 years is plentiful with growth factors, cytokines, stem cells, there's exosomes in the gelatinous matrix. It's amazing what that area contains that is helpful for regenerative therapies. So when you look at this again, <clears throat> when you have an umbilical cord, um, you know, cross section, and you have all this gelatinous matrix of Wharton's jelly that is very commonly used now in regenerative biologics. So when we do regenerative procedures around the world, a lot of what we use are stem cells that are Wharton's jelly derived. All right. So it's just part and parcel of the umbilical cord. Now also, if you care to know, when someone offers you a procedure with umbilical cord blood, where that's coming from is from these two arteries and this vein. If you clip the umbilical cord on both sides and then you know, properly process, uh, the, uh, transport the, the umbilical cord to the processing lab, then what you can do is separate the blood from the rest of the tissue and then process them separately. So you can make an umbilical cord blood product for research or clinical use, and you can then use the stem cells, if you wanted to, from the umbilical cord tissue, the Wharton's jelly, to then culture them. And they're very powerful, powerful, they're very pure and potent, and we've had amazing results with them around the world, all right? So it's just an anatomical term of a part of the umbilical cord that has a a lot of good stuff in it. All right, so visit us online at r3stemcell.com. We have over 50 locations worldwide. We'd love to help you. We'll give you a free consultation to see if you or a loved one is a candidate and how we would customize the treatment protocol for you.